Welcome back to another Motobot video. Now this week, Harley announced their new CVO bikes for 2023. And there's some pretty interesting stuff in here. This isn't just a paint job, but also some tweaks under the hood that could make these the ultimate American Taurus. So here we go with the 16 key things that you need to know about them. First up, let's talk about the big change to the looks and that's predominantly with the bodywork. So whilst the main chassis is taken from the standard street glide and road glide, Things like the fairing, the side panels and the hard cases have all been updated and quite significantly. The Street Glide still gets the signature batwing fairing, but this time it's been jazzed up with a new LED headlight, long wide daytime running lights and some integrated turn signals or indicators too. And while it does retain sort of the same overall silhouette, this is definitely a much more modern take on that batwing format. The Road Glide on the other hand gets the shark nose style chassis mounted fairing and again it's it's a big change with a striking layout for the new LED lighting and integrated indicators. And look, I shared a few pics of this one when it was teased and the reaction was pretty unanimous that it looks a lot like the Indian Challenger and the Pursuit. So have Harley ripped it off or did they invent this shark nose style in the first place? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Both bikes will be offered in two different colors. So you've got the standard dark platinum with bright smoke satin pinstriping and color matched inner fairing. And this one gets gloss black engine components with what they call scorched chrome highlights. The other option is the whiskey neat and raver metallic two-tone, again with color matched inner fairing. And this one is hand painted and there's some orange pinstriping at the color break. And I think it does look a bit more interesting and eye-catching and a bit more luxurious, but wow, this might be the most expensive color option currently on the entire motorcycle market for it adds a huge £6,400 to the total price of the bike. Now performance does get a pretty significant boost though on this bike regardless of which colour you go for and it gets their huge 121 cubic inch version of their Milwaukee 8 V-Twin. For those of you who don't speak cubic inches that's 1,982 cc and they claim there's approximately 8% more torque and 9.5% more horsepower than the regular 117 CI Milwaukee 8. That makes this one 150 15 horsepower at 4,500 RPM, which might not sound like a great deal to non-Harley riders, but these engines are all about punchy gutsiness and it makes 189 Newton meters of peak torque, which is absolutely massive, and it does so down at 3,000 RPM, which is very low and lazy. One of the big factors in how they've achieved these performance increases, along with the extra capacity of course, is the new variable valve timing system. This allows them to optimize the engine for torque and economy in the lower revs, but also allow it to spin up and make more top end power when the rider wants to push it a little harder. So through some electronic controls, the system can either advance or retard the camshaft timing, and it does so smoothly through a possible range of up to 20 degrees of camshaft rotation. Now, of course, we'll have to reserve judgment until we possibly get to ride one, although that could be a pipe dream given the price of these bikes, but this sort of system should give a nice, smooth transition without any notice jerk or step. So yes, more power at the top, but when the bike is just cruising along, they claim 3 to 5% more fuel economy than the 117, which is very nice indeed. Now that variable valve timing is the headline change, but also they say they've improved the cooling system with new channels for coolant in the cylinder heads and you've got a new radiator too. In fact, the cylinder heads have been completely redesigned and they've got a new higher compression ratio, new intake ducts, and there's a new airbox, a new high performance exhaust design with a larger diameter so that's up to four and a half inches from four and they say a new shift drum which will make it easier to find neutral. Now not only are these bikes up on power but they'll also benefit from a little bit of weight loss too. I mean they're still definitely heavy weights at 380 and 391 kilograms wet respectively but that's actually 14 and 16 kilograms down on the standard versions which you know it's not to be sniffed at. Now they claim they've done this by shaving off little bits of the bike here and there. So stuff like forming the fuel tank from lighter gauge steel and manufacturing the new triple clamp using a liquid aluminium forging process. In fact, it actually said aluminum, but I've rewritten that properly. And of course, Harley point out that not only will you get slightly improved braking, handling and acceleration, but also it'll make the bike a little bit easier to pick up off the stand and also move it around the garage. Chassis hardware on these two bikes also gets a boost. So 
the suspension is upgraded with a chunky 47 millimeter upside down shower fork at the front and that gets 117 mil of travel and there's also a rebound and preload adjustable rear shock also from Showa, and while 76 millimeters of travel there doesn't sound like a great deal, especially for a big old bike like this, that's actually 50% up on the 2022 Grand Touring models, and so it should feel a little bit more supple and comfortable over rough roads. Brakes are massively buffed versus the standard bike, so you've got radially mounted four piston Brembo calipers on larger 320 mil discs, and then at the rear, you've also got a four pot Brembo caliper, and this is on a 300 mil disc. So true to American cruiser form, that's a substantial setup at the rear. And despite the fact that these bikes are pretty damn heavy, used in tandem, it should be enough to haul it up nicely. Now this is kind of more of a visual thing, but the wheels on these bikes are beautifully done. On the one hand, they're spoked, which does give it a little bit of a classic look, but they're laced onto these machine cut aluminium rims, which on the other hand are actually quite modern, but I think the combination of the two actually looks pretty awesome. Now they're laced to the edges, so I guess they're tubeless, which is certainly preferable on a big tour like this, so you can just plug them if you get a puncture. And then they also support tire pressure monitoring, which again, is a nice little convenience. And that brings us onto the tech, and the lighting is all LED with that striking new look up front, but they also say they've designed it to produce a super even spread of light, minimizing hot spots. They also get a shutdown sequence, which keeps the lighting illuminated for 10 seconds after the vehicle is turned off. And the integrated indicators up front are nice and neat, and to match, so is the rear. So you've got their combination brakes slash tail slash indicator lights that sit neatly between the bags and the rear mug guard. Now on the riding mode front, there are four to choose from. So you've got road, sport, rain, and custom. Road, of course, is an all-rounder, whereas sport gives the most power and throttle response and more engine braking too, whilst dialing down the traction control. Rain chills out the power delivery and the engine braking, but gives you the max ABS and traction control intervention for extra safety. And then, of course, you've got custom, which lets you pick and choose yourself. All of these rider aids are pretty top notch and actually more akin to a top spec European or Japanese bike than the other stuff you'll typically see in the Harley lineup, which tends to be very technologically stripped back. So ABS and traction control are lean sensitive owing to a six axis inertial measurement unit. And there's also linked braking, which distributes the braking force between the front and rear. There's engine drag torque slip control, which prevents the rear wheel from sliding on heavy downshifts and also vehicle hill control, which makes moving off uphill easier, especially when you're two up with luggage on what's already a pretty hefty machine. But I think the most impressive feature is this new TFT display, which is 12.3 inches, so a massive increase. They say it's the most tech forward display they've ever offered, and it gets 400% more screen space than their previous best. Now it's a touchscreen too, and it works with motorcycle gloves, even in the rain, and it's got the works. So Bluetooth or CarPlay to hook up your phone, voice commands, built-in nav, a built-in radio, and of course, an abundance of speakers so you can blast out your favorite tunes. This audio system is designed by Rockford Fosgate, and it packs a whopping 500 watt amp, as well as speakers in both the fairing and the saddlebag lids. So this would surely be an epic road trip kind of bike, and as such, they've optimized these new CVOs for a little more comfort. So the adjustable handlebar now has a wider, flatter curve on the road glide, and both bikes get a new seat shape with improved padding for a more cushy ride. The front brake lever is adjustable to match the rider's hand size, and there are standard heated grips, as well as a pair of heated clothing connection points below the seat. Now, the aerodynamics have also been optimized for comfort with a thorough testing program that combines computational fluid dynamics, wind tunnel time, and real-world testing. And they say that pesky helmet buffeting has been reduced by 60% versus the 2022 models, and there's also a control vane in the fairing vent that allows the rider to adjust the airflow to their specific taste. So look, it's a lot of bike, but naturally it's gonna be a lot of money. To be precise, it's 38,295 pounds for the street glide and 38,795 for the road glide. And that's without the 6,400 premium for the much better whiskey neat paint job. 
So for reference, that's give or take about 10 grand more than the standard equivalents of each model. And yes, it's a lot of money, but basically you're looking at the best of the best in terms of what Harley can produce. And I, for one, would absolutely love to take one for a spin. As always though, let me know what you think of them down in the comments below. And if you want to see my pick of the best other new Harleys for 2023, I've already made a list and you can find it right here. So give it a click, give it a watch. Let us know which bike you'd pick down in the comments. Many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.